In this video, I'm going to talk about connective tissue. I'm going to give an overview and then describe the functions of connective tissue. So first of all, let's get some background information on connective tissue. And connective tissue, remember, is one of the four types of primary tissues that we talked about. And so connective tissue consists of mostly fibers and ground substance. And essentially what that means is there are not too many cells. And so the cells in connective tissue are widely separated. And there are not many of them. Out of the four primary tissues, it's the most abundant type. So connective tissue is the most abundant type of the primary tissues. And it also tends to be highly vascular, which means it contains a lot of blood vessels. So now I want to give you more subcategories to remember. So there are five types of connective tissue. Remember, so the five that I name are all connective tissue. And so you have fibrous tissue, you have fat, and you have cartilage, blood, and bone. So those are five types of connective tissue. And now, let's talk about the functions of connective tissue. And so the functions of connective tissue, if you think of any of the tissues that we mentioned, um, you have blood, bone, fibrous tissue, cartil cartilage, and fat. If you think about those, those are all um, contribute to the function of connective tissues. And so the first thing, first function of connective tissue, helps to bind organs. So you might not think of bones as or, um, organs, but they are. And so ligaments connect bone to bone, hence the binding of organs, and tendons connect bone to muscle. And so that's one function of connective tissue. The next would be support. Obviously bones help give support to your body, bones and cartilage. That's pretty self-explanatory. The next one is protection. And we're going to talk about physical and immune protection. So connective tissue, um, connective tissue such as bone helps with physically protecting your organs, such as your heart. Um, for example, your cranium protects your brain, your ribs and sternum protect your heart, so that's some physical protection. And then you have immune protection. And so what that is, is you, in blood, you have white blood cells that can attack um, foreign particles to help you to protect your body and prevent sickness. The next one is movement. Obviously bones help you move. And one thing that's kind of cool to mention is the cartilage on the bone surface tends to ease the joint movement. So next, another function of connective tissue is storage. For example, you have fat that stores energy. And then you have bone that's crucial in storing calcium and phosphorus, phosphorus, which are things that are really important to your body. Connective tissue also helps with heat production. So I don't know if many of you have heard of brown fat, but brown fat is different than the fat that most adults have. Most adults have yellow fat. But brown fat is a critical source of heat, and it's found in infants and smaller animals. Um, so brown fat is essentially a highly vascular tissue and tends to generate heat in infants and children. And so metabolism of brown fat can produce a lot of heat. Finally, you have transport. And for transport, the example we're going to do, uh, I'm going to give, is blood. And so blood is critical 
because blood helps remove waste and transport oxygen and all types of stuff. So connective tissue helps with transport. And so those are the seven main functions of connective tissue. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends.